Welcome to Faith Revival Holiness Church, also Faith Revival Place International. I'm your host, Minister and Prophet M.G. Mays. Let us begin in prayer. Father, we so much love you. And as you know, as you wrote in the word, we love you, so we obey your commandments. Because it's just like a, a father and son or or you can say a father and daughter for the ladies relationship, we, but in a grander scale of, of, of that in a perfect way with you. And we, we love you. And so just like a dad, the children obey that dad, 18 and younger, you know, they obey their dad and, and they follow his ways and they love their dad. So they, they obey what he has to say. You know, because they trust them, they love them. Well, that's the same way we need to be with you, except in a grander scale of it. You know, and then you mature, you get over the age of 21, and you still need to honor the, your father and mother. Well, how much more honor do we need to have for God Almighty as well within, within the storyline of family? And we thank you, Father, and we praise you. Amen. All right, well, today we're going to, uh, it's Ketuvim uh, Kohimlet, in God's hands, in God's hands, we're in God's hands, amen, do I have an amen on that, that's wonderful, we're in God's hands, Ketuvim is, of course, for writings, it's pretty, it's pretty weird, it could be maybe a middle name of a boy's name if you're looking for one and kahimlet means teacher our preacher our our gathering thyself together to learn uh, a lot of people uh consider it, uh, the preacher but i think the best word for it is teacher but either three of them would work because they're all in within the wording so if you said one of the three you're right on and so where we're going to go is Ecclesiastics, which is actually the Latin uh, version, you know, you might as well call it the teacher, or uh, the Hebrew version of the, the, what the name is, Kohimlet. Um, chapter 9, verse 1 through 18, 10, 1 through 20. And so we're going to learn that we're in God's hands. And so if you're worried maybe about some crazies that you hear on the news are you worried about the way the government's treating small business people or ranchers or something like that are you worried of what the future holds well you know what you need to understand you're in god's hands if if, if you distrust him if you're in the trust not just the fact of the word trust but the other version of trust when you're in a trust when someone puts their you and their your name under a trust, we're under God's name, His trust. Amen. Today, not only that, but we are in God's hands. Amen. And so, let us begin. Now that we uh, encouraged you, let us start the word, shall we? I uh, appear myself to all of this. Uh, uh, swiftly through it and conducting that the righteous and the wise along with their deeds are in God's hands we're in God's hands my friends we just need to be righteous and wise not in ourselves but through what we understand through the word and prayer and practicing of those two things in the midst of a relationship with God, we're in God's hands. Emmanuel, God with us. It's another another meaning of Emmanuel. In God's hands, Emmanuel, God's with us. In God's hands, amen. A person cannot know whether those people and deeds will be rewarded with love or with hatred. All options are open. Anything can happen to anyone. The same thing can happen to righteous as the wicked, to the good and the clean 
and to the unclean, to to the righteous or to, uh, to or to the wicked. Someone who suffers a sacrifice and to someone who doesn't offer the sacrifice, uh, we do we do this through prayer now, the completion of what prayer does now. It uh, it is the same for a good person as for a sinner. For someone who takes the oath rashly as for someone who reverence it and to take the oath. This is another evil among all those done under the sun, that the same event can occur to anyone. Truly, the human mind is full of evil, and as long as a person lives, folly is in their hearts, after which they go to do to be with the dead. For as long as the person is linked with the living, where where is hope? Better is to be living dog than to die as a lion. For living knows that they will die, but the dead knows nothing. There is no no longer any reward for them, because all the memories of those is lost. What they loved, what they hated, and what they in envied all despite long ago and they know and they no longer have a share in anything done under the sun so go eat your bread with joy drink with wine with happiness of heart for God has already accepted your deeds let your clothing always be white meaning in holiness let your clothing be always white. The, the meaning of that is holiness. And never fail to perfume your head, meaning groom yourself, make yourself look good, not for others, but for, for your God, because this is what it's about here. Amen. Enjoy life with your wife, and you have, have love throughout your meaningless life that he has given you under the sun, God Almighty, and all the days of your future, for that is your allotment, portion in life, in your labor that you work at under the sun. Whatever task comes to you, way, do it. Do it with all your strength, because in Sholo, there where you will Go, there is neither working or planning, neither knowledge or nor wisdom. Meaning, until the Lord comes, you know, the second time. But at this, what he's referring to is when you die, there, there's, you know, there's a rest area. Even though your spirit, but the rest of you is in the grave until the Lord comes, the, you know, to take and resurrect your whole self, amen? And and so that's what it's referring to there. And yet in another living or exerb under the sun is the race uh, aren't won, but the swift are the battles by the strong. The food doesn't go to, to the wise or the wealth to the intelligent or favor to expect, rather time and chance rose over them all. For people don't know when their time will come. Any more than the fish taken into the fruit of a net, or a bird caught in the snare. People are snared at unfortunate times, and then suddenly it falls on them. Here is uh, something else. I have seen a wisdom under the sun. It seems important to me. There was a small town with few people in it. And a great king came to attack it. Surrounded it and built massive siege works against it. 
Now there was found in, in it a man who was poor but wise. But this wisdom he saved the city. Amen. So you can be a poor person and have wisdom and save a city from destruction. You, you see that? You don't have to be rich to have wisdom. Remember that. And saved the city, yet afterwards nobody remembered the poor man. Why? Because people are in the things of the world. That's why. So although I say that wisdom is better than strength, nevertheless the poor man's wisdom is uh, despairing. Nobody pays attention to what he says. A wise man speaks quietly is more worth heeding than the shouting of a, a, a ruler commanding fools. Wisdom is better than weapons of war. A, a man, wisdom is better than weapons of war. That means we need to, to uh, put into making very wise people in the land instead of people that want war. Amen. But a person who makes a mistake cannot destroy much good. Just as the dead flies make perfume oil stink, so as so as a little folly outweighs wisdom and honor. Don't go into foolishness because all the wise things have you done in the past can be dashed to the stone or the ground, basically. Another way of saying that. A wise person's heart leads him rightly, but a fool's heart leads him astray. Don't have a foolish heart. Have a wise heart for the Spirit of God that needs to be in you today. Amen. And then the fool's travel, he, is, he has no good sense, thus showing everyone that he is a fool. If a ruler gets angry at you, stay at your poles, because the calamity smooths great offense. Another evil I have seen under the sun, a kind of a mistake rulers make, is that foes are, are promoted in high positions. So that is a is a foolish thing that leaders do. They they promote foolish people instead of wise people. People that care about what God's word says and care for the people. While the rich occupy humble places, I have seen servants riding horses while princes walk on the foot of slaves. He who digs a pit may fall into it. He who breaks through the walls may he bite by a snake. He who quells stone may get hurt by them. He who chops wood puts himself in danger. If the hatchet iron blade is blunt. So basically you don't have a blunt edge when you're chopping wood. Common sense things is part of salvation too. You must remember that. And its user does not sharpen it. He will have to uh, uh, expert more effortly. But experts have advantage of his skill. If a snake bites before it is charmed, the snake charmer has no advantage. The word spoken by the wise brings them favor. Amen. So meaning you don't hide the wisdom that God gives you or the Lord allows you to understand it within nature or whatever God allows you to understand spiritually, naturally, and emotionally. You must not hide it from the world. You must share it with others because wisdom is about sharing with others so that they can have a favorable life too. Amen. But the, the lips of the fool swell them up. What he says starts with foolishness and ends with wicked 
madness. So the foolishness of the folly of people's hearts make them into a wickedness, a madness. A fools keep talking and talking, yet no one knows what the future will bring except for those that God chooses to know those things. Amen. Can anyone tell a person what will happen after he goes? The efforts of the fools wear himself out. He does not even know the ways of the town. Woe to you when, when the king is a child, meaning, ch meaning not mature, of understanding they must be reverent to God and, and searching out the heart of the people of what needs to be done. See, and, and when they don't do that, they're like a child. The politicians are like children. They're not grown up, not, not understanding that they need to be reverent to God, finding out what is most matters to the, to the people in goodness and holiness. And after the leader starts their, their parties in the morning, happy are you, land, when the king is well born, meaning well in, in the, the reality of common sense, well of, born of understanding they must be reverent to God and, and searching for what is most matterable for the people that need to be done. And goodness and holiness and your prince eat at the proper time in order to to stay strong no no not to get drunk and when the elder is lazy the rough sages and when the hands are idle the house leaks the parties are made for having a good time Wine added cheerful in the life. It says wine adds to cheerful in life, but it doesn't say get drunk on wine either. And money has an answer for everything. Don't insult the king, uh, not even in the thought. And don't insult the wealth, uh, not even in your bedroom. For the birds in the air might carry the news, and the creatures with wings might uh, re repent with you uh, and uh, saints. So you got to know that God is with us. That that there's tragedy in this world, and and how much you trust in God is what you're going to get out of life basically too and that that there's common sense as as well as holiness that we need to have and so these things that you heard today is common sense another meaning of it is conservativeness which has many broad meanings as well common sense sticking together what is right uh, do thinking things through properly, um, doing what is right and not what's wrong, uh, following a pattern that is successful, and going the way of, of a righteous person should go. Conservativeness. But the main the main thing of what conservativeness is is common sense. All the things that God promotes. Is within the word of common uh, with with conservativeness. So those that shun conservativeness are shunning God's principles that we need to live, because conservativeness is the natural way man or woman should live, and then spiritually we walk in holiness and grace and justice, and then in in a way of life all together. It's faithfulness, love, and peace. Amen. So all these things are very important. Some are for our emotional establishment, which would be love, mercy, and, and, and justice, and faithfulness. 
but some of them are for our our earthly side of us common sense conservativeness and then some for our spiritual well-being holiness and again faithfulness mercy grace justice again you know and so you got to understand God is a well-rounded God and he's not one-sided where there's love there's also the wrath of God where there's faithfulness there's also correction for those that are unfaithful you see so and God wants us to be well rounded and in our in our uh, our emotional state our physical estate and our spiritual estate God wants us to have the proper tools that that we need to have amen every day so now I'm gonna go and ask you are you saved today are you saved Let's talk it out, Arabs. God wants you to know that if you served him, you would not be in hatred right now. You would not be doing unholy things to your neighbors or to uh, your fellow nations by you or your fellow towns. Or you would not be beating up your women, your children like you do, or yourselves. That God does not promote unholiness. God promotes holiness. He, pr he promotes common sense. He promotes mercy and justice at the same time. And he, and he wants us to be in holiness and faithfulness. And show mercy, but also show justice when we need to. With, with the righteousness of what the Bible says. And the Holy Spirit leads us to do. Amen. You Arabs, I hope you're convicted. I know you watch, and I and I have no hatred for you. The only thing that the Bible says hate, there's only two things the Bible says hate. It says hate Satan. That's the first thing the Bible says to hate. Second thing it says to hate is wickedness. So those only things that God allows a good person to hate. Wickedness. And, the, and, and Satan. Okay? So I, I don't hate you guys. We, we are allowed to, to not be happy with your lifestyle. Which we are not. Because hurting babies, hurting the innocent that have never done nothing to you, it's called killing, I mean murdering somebody. Okay? Now if you go... And kill an animal, and it's only one for food. That's okay, but murder is where it's wrong. Murdering something innocently, that's innocent, has never hurt you. Hurting your women, your children, that is a sin. Don't you understand that? Making yourself, you men, making yourself better than women and not understanding that women need to be nurtured, that women need to be loved is a sin. Understanding that God is a God of holiness, faithfulness, and love. Not just love. Before love, there was holiness. This is why he has perfect love, because he's holy. And that's what you need to have, is holiness. Because everything is in the package of holiness. Love is part of that package of holiness. If you don't have holiness, you're not going to have a proper love. Because this is why the churches stumble. And they say they have love, but do they, are they holy? How can they know true love unless they're holy? How can you know true faithfulness Unless you're holy. How can you know how to do tr true justice and mercy in the land if you don't know holiness? And this is what's missing in you Arabs as well as I met with a lot of the churches and synagogues that are lukewarm. Yes, indeed. It, it, true. But I'm referring to you right now. Don't don't take it into something else when I'm talking to you right now, Arabs. God wants you to be a holy Arabic people that has holy pride and do what God wants in holiness. God made you a wildfire for a reason because there's a lot of potential. 
of, of new inventions, new ways to help with child care, a whole bunch of things that's in you, ready to come out. Good, holy, viable things that you can do to make this world a better place. And all you have to do is accept that Yeshua HaMashiach, Emmanuel, the Mashiach, died on the cross for you as well as everybody else. It's a meaning that you need a savior. A meaning that you fell for a false god, which is nothing but Satan. A meaning that you need the Mashiach in your life today, the Messiah, the Christ. He was the very image of Yahweh in every way. That's why he's called Emmanuel, God with us. God wants to be with you today. Will you be saved today? Will you take that guilt and, and surrender to God and say, Yes, Lord, I want to be a saved man or woman. That's a, that's a messianic Arab. If that's you, get ready to pray. I'm going to turn my affections also to pray for some others as well. You Christians and Jews that are, are lukewarm, don't you understand that lukewarmness doesn't get you to the kingdom of heaven? Do you not understand that cowardness will wind up someday eating you up and you will wind up in the wrong place? God wants you to be saved in your spirit, in your heart. God wants to put a new heart in you, a new spirit in you today. You can't stay lukewarm and be pleasing to God. If that's you, get ready to pray the salvation prayer and really get right with God. Third group, the Gohims and the Pagans. You don't have to be a Gohim or a Pagan anymore. You can be righteous with God. You don't have to be a heathen or a Gohim. You can be saved today. You can be righteous today. You can be full of God's light. You must be saved. You must repent of your ways be saved today. Are you ready? Is that you? Well, with everybody like-minded and, and humble before God, let us pray this prayer together. Repeat after me. Dear God, Yahweh, I ask you into my spirit, soul, and body as Lord and Savior of my life. Amen. Love you very much, Yeshua Jesus. Amen. Now let me pray over you. Father, I pray over the baptism of the Spirit of God be upon them now. I pray that they'll be washed by the by your blood of atonement of the cross and all the history of Genesis and Revelation wrapped up in that cross for them. Your blood sacrifice be upon them now. I pray for them to be baptized in the water when they can as well. I pray for them to have a hunger of your word, a hunger of prayer, and a hunger of fellowship with you, Father. And I thank you, Father. I put the Psalms 91 over them, Ephesians 1, Ephesians 3. And I thank you, Father, that we remember of all that Deuteronomy has spoken of heritage unto them all. And I thank you, Father. I praise you, your holy name. And I send them forth I bless them to do the works of the Lord as well. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, amen. God loves you. God has a plan for you. Now I want to turn my affections to pray for the sick and heavy laden. Look upon our, our affliction. And plead our case. Redeem us speedily for your name's sake. For you are a mighty Redeemer. Blessed are you, O Yahweh, the Redeemer. Amen. I thank you, Father, right now for redeeming. The redeeming power of holiness and love. Going forth and healing them all. May they have testimony that feeling better than they did. Father, and I ask for the miracles as well. I ask that your miracle work in power as well as your healing power going forth. Father, may, may there be a healing for those and may there be miracles for others and create a miracles even. I pray for that soldier to get brand new legs where there's no legs. I pray for the cancer patients to be totally healed of the, those things that are causing those things to happen. I thank you, Father, for the children that, are, that have 
problems with them. I pray that those problems will drift away and they be whole. As little men and women as they could be. I thank you, Father, for headaches that are diminishing right now, for back aches that are that are being straightened in their backs so they don't have back aches anymore. I thank you for your perfect will upon them all. Almighty God, let it be known, all praises go to God, not to no human being alike, but to God alone will be the praises and honor and glory forever. I thank you, Father, in your holy name. Amen. Believe and receive now the blessings of God is with you. Now let, let's, let's end with the Shalom prayer. Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. Holiness and brings peace. The past is all understanding. Not, nothing severed, nothing broken. All complete because the King of Peace, which is Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Emmanuel, is with you. Now do not accept the peace and safety of the world that leads to sudden destruction because there's no wholeness in the worldly peace. Only in God's peace, there's wholeness that brings you to true peace. I thank you, Father, and I bless them in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Emmanuel, Yahweh. And I thank you, Father, blessing them. Now, I warn you, do not take the RFD chip. It's the mark of the beast. Don't sign up for Obamacare, because that is the name of it. Do not reverent evil leaders like Obama and Hillary Clinton because they are the names within it, the image within it, evil people that aspire to, to make you like cattle and mark you like cattle. There's, there's, there's things in that chip that will block your spiritual understanding of, of, of spiritual life. They have a stain in that chip that blocks that. Also, they can control your brain and make you be any way they want you. Nothing but a slave if you take that chip. Don't take that chip. It's better to die it's, and, to live, and to live for the Lord than live and take that chip and lose your salvation and your soul to Satan. Don't take the chip. Be careful the EMV uh, card that has a biometric chip, meaning don't put it on you because it can make you sick. Uh, just keep it, you know, use it on the, you know, the phone. You can use the number and all. But when it comes down to it, cash is probably the best way to go if you can, can do that. And uh, there's coming a time where... The believers have to trust God because you can't you get the chip. You can't get those things. It will condemn your salvation. You could you could be saved, and then if you get that chip, there's no more salvation for you. That's how serious it is. So I suggest you you, you read your word, get strong with God, stay in faith. Don't get in fear in this. God wants you to know the truth so the truth can set you free. It's, it's the people that don't want to accept the truth are probably the ones that are going to get the chip later on. That's why God wants you to know the truth so the truth can set you free. But the thing is, you must not get in fear, you must stay in faith. Now knowing these things, for those that don't know or for those that need to understand, you understand now. I bless you in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Emmanuel, and Yahweh, Jesus. Go forth and do what God wants. I love you. More importantly, the Spirit of God loves you. Shalom to you.